Stranger Things is a Netflix original drama that takes place in a small town in the year 1983. The story follows several people from the town and how they are affected by top secret government experiments that involve supernatural forces. This show is now extremely popular and it intentionally mimics everything from the 1970s and 80s that has to do with horror, science fiction, and fantasy. You'll easily notice traces of The Goonies, E.T., Stand By Me, Poltergeist, and Alien. There is so much more to this series as well, including the fact that it's inspired by actual events, and if you're still watching, then I assume that you have watched all 8 episodes just like I have. So let's get started. The first episode begins at a government laboratory that is also located within the small town, and things seem to have gotten out of hand as some sort of monster is on the loose inside the building. So we are immediately introduced to the supernatural aspect of this story. Next we meet the boys that the story centers around, Dustin, Lucas, Mike, and Will. They enjoy playing Dungeons and Dragons. One night after playing, the boys take off and go their separate ways. Will rides his bike through the woods, passing by Hawkins' laboratory. He ends up having a run-in with the monster that seems to have escaped from the government facility and vanishes without a trace. After people notice Will's disappearance, his mom and his friends begin to look for him. Meanwhile, one of the human test subjects with psychic abilities has also escaped the research lab. During a night when the boys were out looking for Will, they stumbled upon this test subject which happens to be a young girl that doesn't talk with the number 11 tattooed on her arm. So they just call her Eleven, or L for short. That's a generous dose of symbolism all on its own. Anyway, this is where I wanted to get to in the story. The boys, especially Mike, start getting to know L. During the process, she has multiple flashbacks of being in the Hawkins laboratory where her psychic abilities were exploited and that's what caused the rip in dimensions that allowed the demonic entity into our world. Now what's interesting about all this is that it's based on a true story. The Montauk Project the Montauk Project was a series of secret United States government projects conducted at Camp Hero and or Montauk Air Force Station on Montauk, Long Island. It was secretly developing a powerful psychological war weapon. The Montauk Project is a continuation of the controversial Philadelphia experiment, which took place around October 28, 1943. A report was prepared and presented to Congress and was soundly rejected as far too dangerous. So a proposal was made directly to the Department of Defense promising a powerful new weapon that can drive an enemy insane, inducing the symptoms of schizophrenia at the touch of a button. Without congressional approval, the project would have to be top secret and secretly funded. The Department of Defense approved. The U.S. Air Force had a decommissioned base at Montauk, New York, not far from Brookhaven, which had a complete SAGE radar installation. This site was large and remote and water access would allow equipment to be moved in and out undetected. Equipment was moved to Camp Hero at the Montauk base in the late 60s and installed in an underground bunker beneath the base. According to researchers, to mask the nature of the project, the site was closed in 1969 and donated as a wildlife refuge with the provision that everything underground would remain the property of the Air Force. Although in reality, the base remained open until the 1980s. The park has never been opened to the public under the excuse of environmental contamination. Many dedicated researchers claim that the experiments became fully active in the early 1980s. Between the Philadelphia experiment in the 1940s and the Montauk project in the 1980s, numerous trials were conducted to do with telekinesis, teleportation, remote viewing, time travel, and of course, MK Ultra mind control. Thousands of kids, kids died in this program out of fear. They were scared to death. I mean, I have no reason to lie about any of this and uh, anybody that doesn't believe it, they're gonna think we're all crazy anyway. It really doesn't matter to me and I don't really care. Approximately 120 miles east of New York City rest the small and remote town of Montauk. Its name was inherited from the Montauket Indians, who were settlers of the land for over 4,000 years. 
From as far back as the Revolutionary War, it was a place of interest for military forces. A place of comfort and happiness for most who visit, but there are others who claim that Montauk is the place where unimaginable horrors occurred. Above the seemingly perfect American small town lurks the ANFBS 35 radar tower, a 70-ton relic of United States Air Force history. On official record, Camp Hero, which was originally Fort Hero, was built in 1942. It was primarily used by the U.S. Air Force during the Second World War. They wanted a large number of programmed boys to be used for mind control operations. The Montauk Boys program, basically, what they were doing, they would pick up boys, young men, off the street and take them to this facility. And it started by picking them up off the streets around Long Island, then New York. Lost kids, left home, living off the streets, do anything for a living to make a few bucks. Runaway teens, prostitutes, uh, uh, foster children, children of drug addicts, uh, wh whomever was considered uh, expendable and uh, no one would miss them. But they would also have scouting missions in cities and other locations. They knew the type of genetics they were looking for. And if they saw someone that matched those genetics and that person was easily grabbable, they would take that person. Sometimes they would throw you in a cement room and they would hit you with a wooden pole or they would take some kind of metal rod and hit you with it. There were a number of different people that would administer the uh, tortures, experiments, programming, etc. They were not always the same person so that I would not develop any kind of relationship with them and they would not feel a relationship with me. Um, I wouldn't call them handlers uh, particularly. I think some of them were just um, kind of automatons. They were, they were sometimes soldiers, they looked like soldiers, sometimes they looked like ordinary people off the street. I never knew what to expect and they were always there and they're always male, never, never female that would, that would do these kinds of things. The beatings were the most horrible and the fact that they were doing it without the approval of the kids. You know, it was literally kidnapping. Uh, one thing they loved to do was uh, drown you, hold you underwater to the point where you were about to give up. They wanted to split the mind. They wanted to shatter the mind. Then they would program each individual piece for something else. But what was the intention on the beatings and the drownings? That must have that, that was to shatter the uh, mind even further. So they can manipulate it? Yes, they can manipulate it. Breaking the psyche of the person uh, to install programming, to fracture the mind pattern, is to make you uncomfortable. Because when you're, you know, first you're cold, then you're hot, then you're cold, and you, the mind doesn't know what to expect. And after a while, it fractures. Okay, when you take a personality and you fragment it into pieces, they take one of the pieces and then they develop it into a sub-personality or a related personality, which is a little different than the core personality. And then they provide a code that triggers that personality to come forward and take control of the body. They were programmers, not handlers or controllers, but programmers who uh, would only come into the room after I had been sedated, drugged, uh, beaten. I was pretty much immobile, um, just laying there on the table, fastened down, and then the programmers would come in. Then they would put the lights over the table, then they would fasten things to different parts of my body, particularly my head area. There were so many different types of rituals that involved astral entities. Uh, but uh, one of them was to create the child as a vessel so that the entity could enter the body of the child and animate it and then those participating in the ritual would achieve uh, the energy of that entity that was occupying the body. There would be a chemical type of smell. It would put things in my arms, in my legs, in my genitals, in my head and then I would hear input 
voices over and over and over again and then there'd be like the swirl I would see the swirling uh, vortex over my uh, visual uh, perception get to a point where you just didn't even care anymore because you couldn't even feel the pain anymore. I think that was a form of dissociation um, and that's what they wanted. They wanted you to dissociate, fracture the mind. That's how the programming begins. I did see a couple of their sessions. It was disgusting, made me sick. Can you describe a little bit of that? I would just as soon die. The amazing things that they could think of to create fear, anxiety, and fracturing. I, I don't know how human beings could even think of such things, but they did. Definitely, I did see people die. I saw animals being murdered. I saw people being murdered. I saw uh, rapes uh, of all kinds. And I suppose the idea was to desensitize from those things so that if you were programmed to do any of that, it wouldn't make you feel it one way or another. It would be completely neutral to you because you'd been so downloaded with this for so many times, it was no more different than washing your hands. Using children was extremely important because they were innocent and they had extreme fear. The pineal gland excrete, excretes a chemical called adrenochrome. And this is a, uh, an, uh, a body enhancer, a mind enhancer, a mood enhancer that the Illuminati and uh, the elite use, which is extremely powerful if extracted uh, when a person is at the height of fear. Depending on the kind of programming that they were going to use a particular person for, depending on that person's mind pattern and genetics, they would use drugs like LSD because they were trying to find the combination that would create an altered state that allowed easy downloading of the programming. Some of it was thanks to the Nazis. Some of it was thanks to some alien groups that had been doing this for years. When they take a child who is uh, more afraid than an adult in most situations and they bring them to a, a state of extreme fear and at that moment they sacrifice them. Then they immediately extract the adrenal chrome from the pineal gland, and that was more valuable to them than gold. It was said I put back in the public as like Man Manchurian candidate soldiers. They could be activated at any time. And we figure there's at least a hundred thousand of them done around the country. Nobody was sure of exactly one of the Montauk boys trained for. Many of them were used as spies. Like Matter Harry, except he was a male. And that was a major part of the program. There's another major part of the program which was swept under the rug was a lot of the kids were psychics. And they descended on this and trained them as psychics to engage in psychic warfare. And this is where some of the problems have come from in the military since. An insidious alien lineage disguised as human beings, which they refer to as the Illuminati, has covertly enslaved the human race since its inception. The Swerdlows further claim that the Illuminati control our thoughts, partially by poisoning our food and water supply. Nazi scientists knew that there were certain things, chemicals that they could put in food and water and medication to dumb down the brain, uh, damage the body, make the person weaker, so that they could be more controllable. Things like fluoride, chlorine in the water, uh, mercury and, and aluminum in your food. All these things, when you ingest them, basically create heavy metal toxins in your body. And after a while, you become like a walking antenna. You become almost metallic. You pick up the ELF and microwave signals and scalar waves that are transmitted from satellites and cell phone towers, etc., so that you're constantly uh, available for programming 24-7.
We live in a world of now over 7 billion people. The Illuminati, or those who could claim connection to Illuminati, are really just a few hundred thousand. So the odds are stacked against them. If everyone in the world rebelled against the Illuminati, they could be overrun in moments. We all know that MK Ultra mind control is 100% real. It's been disclosed. We are not professing to tell you the complete story of these activities. Yeah. We are professing to tell you the complete story that we know. Right. But these records that we've uncovered yeah. don't tell the story. They tell pieces of it. They apologized for it. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. Some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. Nobody should have to go through this. The United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments. And we know that they're still doing it and that it's far more advanced now than one could ever imagine. What I want to stress is that these guys may believe that they were coming into contact with aliens from a distant galaxy far, far away, but in fact, these are extra-dimensional beings. Some would call them demons, or even fallen angels. There is indeed supernatural phenomenon occurring on our plane of existence, but extraterrestrials traveling from millions of miles away is a fat chance. So what do you think? Is this all just some twisted fantasy, or is the veil of shadows right next to us and we don't even see it? Freedom of Information Act released a bunch of documents. You found out that all these different subjects that had taken this chemical all experienced the same phenomena under the drug. They experienced something out there that, that came to them that met them halfway. These entities were kind of malignant and threatening. And actually, a handful of the volunteers had traumatic and terrible encounters with these entities. 